Hi there, I'm Edgar Wright, and with this handy marker, I'm going to break down some of the details, some of the tricks, and some of the choreography from my favorite scenes in my career. You're outside? You mothers. This is a scene from Space, the TV show that I made in 1999. And this is how I first worked with Simon Pegg, Jessica Hines, and Nick Frost. This is a payoff to this episode where they go out for a night in Camden. You set up earlier in the show that they have these telepathic gun battles and they take down these thugs. Let them have it. One of my favorite things about this sequence is that the actors are doing the sound effects themselves, and then we dubbed on a whole bunch of other real gun sounds as well. So that was something that came up in the edit and the sound mix. It was just funny having both of them together. And you can just tell what utter joy everybody is having making not just the sounds of the guns, but like Simon Pegg doing like the sound of his own squib going off is just hilarious to me. But you can hear the actors going, Pfft. I don't remember like storyboarding much of the show. Everything I've done since then, I've storyboarded every single frame. But I'm pretty sure I storyboarded this one. The storyboards would pretty much be like Tim's face, maybe like kind of like, ah! That would pretty much what the, or maybe I would draw Simon's kind of like strange widow's peaks. That is pretty much what a spaced storyboard would look like. Uh, this shot is my favorite shot in the sequence because this actor whose name is Alex Noodle was just doing his like squirting throat and doing the noises for it. Top marks Alex Noodle for stealing the entire sequence with one cutaway. The next scene is from Shaun of the Dead. This is the scene on the Sunday morning when Shaun goes to the shops oblivious to the fact that there's a zombie apocalypse happening. This was actually the first shot of the entire movie that we did, and we really wanted to start with a very complicated shot. I think we maybe did about eight to 10 takes of this. It was a very challenging shot to start with, but I felt it was a good thing to do something really ambitious on the first day of the shoot, which involved the whole crew, and also kind of like signal to everybody, people making the movie, this is how we mean to go on, where this is what the movie's gonna be. When we were doing the location scout for this shot, my director of photography, David Dunlap, he said to me, this shot's gonna get cut out of the movie. And I said, it's gonna get cut out of the movie? Why? He goes, you'll never use this shot in its entirety. I bet you any money it's gonna get cut out. And so I was kind of so annoyed about that comment that basically I went away with um, both my production designer and Simon Pegg, and I think we like tripled the detail in the shot. So all of these things like you've seen a guy washing that car window, later you see him as a zombie. So we just added all of these details, like having Simon like trip over twice. He does it in the earlier version of the shot, he does it again. We have other gags like this uh, jogger, who you see earlier in the film running past, and now you see him running away in terror. This is actually Chris Dickens, the editor of the movie, <laughs> making his cameo. I just didn't want this shot to be cut out, so I just kind of crammed it full of as much like sight gags and payoffs as possible. You also see earlier in the film, you see this road sweeper, and now you see his kind of discarded cart. You can't see this very well, but actually, this is Bub's Pizza, which is a reference to the amazing zombie in Day of the Dead played by Howard Sherman. And when you're making a movie, like, if you have to make up businesses, it's always like, well, this is a great way to cram in lots of, like, film references. So this is our kind of, like, little tribute to George Romero's Day of the Dead. I always like the idea that Sean takes a Diet Coke there because this is the point where he's been dumped by his girlfriend and probably decided to get his shit together and his one concession to maybe being a grown-up is stop drinking full fat Coke. <laughs> Simon Pegg is such an immensely skilled comic actor that he can fake a slip on some blood which is not actually there. If you're trying to pick holes in the movie, when the shot continues, you can't see any blood on the floor. But I always thought Simon like sort of like faking a slip, which is not easy to do, is really, really great. 
So when you're shooting a shot like this, there's a whole army of PAs who are trying to stop people from walking into the shot and try and hold traffic. And some takes were ruined by people right at the end of the shot, like a drunk guy walked through at the end and went, go oh, fuck yourselves, and like ruined an otherwise perfectly good take. It's worth pointing out that the reason that he eats the strawberry cornetto is when I was at art college and I was very hungover, I had a hankering for some ice cream in the morning and it really helped my hangover. And after that, for a very long time, the cornetto became my hangover cure. I don't know if there's any medical basis in that idea, but I like to believe that it's true. This was another late-breaking addition to the scene when the DP said that we were gonna cut the, <laughs> cut the shot out of the movie. He's gonna walk past this door and say, let's put a dead body on the floor. So then we come full circle, like this guy is like a sort of a homeless guy who's asked Sean for money earlier in the film. Sean just assumes that he's still asking for money, but essentially he wants to kind of eat him. You can also see in the background the groom who is basically going to be the zombie that actually gets into their house in a later scene. And then the shot ends exactly as it started with him kind of pulling the gate. And that was the first slate of the first day of shooting on Shaun of the Dead. Next up, we're gonna look at a scene from my third movie, Hot Fuzz, from 2007. Me and Simon are both from that area of the country in the southwest of England. I, I never intended to shoot it in my hometown because I was worried what they might think. And then as it happened, it was just ended up being the best place to shoot it. So I had the very strange and amazing experience of shooting this movie about like a corrupt neighborhood watch <laughs> in my actual hometown. This particular shot, we basically tried to do the shot from Raiders of the Lost Ark, where Indiana Jones like runs into the market, trying to look for Marion in a basket. So essentially this was our little tribute to Indiana Jones. You mothers. I don't know why, it's probably one of the sillier jokes in the movie, oh you mothers, and it cuts to these mothers with prams blocking its way, which means he has to go a different way. But this actually is like where I used to walk home from school. This is right around the corner from the comprehensive school that I went to. So I, this, the film that couldn't be more close to home for me. It's very sort of funny to watch and then make like a big American style action film in my hometown. Let's cut through there. Come on. Through the gardens. What's the matter, Danny? You've never taken a shortcut before. This is like a payoff to the fence gag in Shaun of the Dead, where Shaun tries to jump over a fence and fails, and we thought Nicholas Angel would be a lot better at it. I'm taking a shortcut before. It's worth pointing out that in this shot, Simon Pegg performs the first three jumps. So that's Simon. That's Simon. That's Simon. And then now, here, an acrobat takes over. We call this the Texas Switch. I like done Texas Switches in all of my movies, but this is like a good Texas Switch where Simon Pegg is gonna magically turn into an acrobat. An acrobat. He also actually, we did a Texas Switch in Shaun of the Dead where he sort of played sort of Simon's like jumping double. Mom! So he's on a trampoline and he goes over. And then this is Nick Frost actually doing this bit. And I told Nick Frost to look back right here. And he says, why would I look back? And I said, if you don't look back, people won't know that you've done the stunt. You have to take the glory of doing the stunt. So just make it look like you look back at the damage that's been done so that you can see that Nick Frost actually did that stunt and not a stunt man. And now we're gonna look at a scene with another Texas switch from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World from 2010. So Scott Pilgrim, like the coward he is, does not want to see his recently ex-girlfriend Knives Chow right now. And what he is going to do is get out of the apartment straight away. What's that? You're outside? This guy here? Uh, you know what? He just left. Now, if you watch this shot, this is Michael Sarah here. And then... Here? Uh, you know what? 
In the same shot, Michael Sarah is now hiding behind this door. And this is the stuntman, Chris Mark, who jumps through this very narrow window. And I think some people assume that it's like a digital trick or that we're doing something fancy with the editing. But all that happens is Michael Sarah runs to the one side of the room and Chris Mark runs and launches himself off a mini trampette through this very narrow window, which as I recall, probably had foam around it just in case he caught himself. But if you actually watch the shot, Chris Mark, an amazing stuntman, goes through the window without touching the sides. It's quite incredible. I don't think we did too many takes of it. My, my recollection is that Chris Mark nailed it every time. There's probably only three takes of this shot. One of the absolute joys of that movie and the main memory I take away from it is what fun the cast members had and I think that chemistry is infectious and you can just see in that scene the fun that Michael Sarah, Ellen Wong and Kieran Culkin are having and uh, it's, it's something to this day that I have immensely pleasurable memories about that movie because of the cast. So the next scene is a big old brawl from my movie The World's End 2013. <laughs> This is a scene in the movie uh, in the kind of a pub called The Beehive where our sort of middle-aged drinkers are trying to recreate this pub crawl from their youth and have stumbled onto an alien invasion. Uh, it's worth pointing out all of these stuntmen in the background are wearing these like LED goggles and also they've got lights in their mouths which when you shoot the scene in anamorphic they kind of flare out in the background. And Pierce Brosnan here, I'm not sure that he, he definitely didn't have the goggles on but we may have done a take where we made him put a light in his mouth. So I might like to say Apologies to Pierce Brosnan. If you will not join us willingly, we will be forced to use other means of persuasion. Now, please. So this is a tribute here to um, Sammo Hung, the famous uh, Hong Kong action star, the stunt coordinator who designed all of this action. Brad Allen passed away this year, like a, an amazing talent sort of taken from us too soon and worked with Jackie Chan and had come from the Hong Kong School of Filmmaking. You've seen his work in other movies like the Kingsman series and more recently in uh, Shang-Chi but this is one of the many great scenes that he choreographed. I, I really knew that Nick Frost could do this action, so one of the like, real pleasures of the world's end is seeing Nick Frost let rip. I fucking hate this town! I really like the idea of Nick using stools. <laughs> on his fists. I thought, because we've kind of set up the idea that Andy Knightley used to be a big drinker and he isn't anymore, he's teetotal, and then he gets drunk during the course of the film and suddenly like his legend as a big brawler comes out. He's basically wearing these kind of stools, but now they're foam so he can literally thump stuntmen in the face with a foam stool, which is always fun. <laughs> So what you're seeing here is like a great kind of combination of practical stunts and digital effects because this is a stuntman who's being pulled on a wire and obviously in reality his head is there but the wizards at Double Negative who did the digital effects delete his head and also add this kind of like Lego stub at the top of the neck. I really like this idea that the blanks would like break apart like action figures that all their limbs and heads were all detachable. <laughs> In this scene, it's just worth watching Simon Pegg try to finish his drink. That to me is like the, the, the funniest bit, is where we try to combine, much like the master Jackie Chan himself, but I love in the middle of all of these punches and blows, just si see, seeing Simon do like a spit take in the middle of it all is uh, fantastic. <laughs> What me and Brad Allen would love doing is trying to make what look like continuous shots. And something like this going behind somebody's body is like a stitch. So this is where like, you can cut from one section to another. But usually the stitch is to hide the next rig. So I think in this case, we had a stitch going behind the body because in the next shot, the stuntman is gonna go flying through the doors. <laughs> And there he goes, prepped to smash into those doors. I think there's probably about three or four stitches going on here. Every time there's a whip pan or like a sort of a frame wipe, it's usually a invisible edit to get to a, the next kind of setup or, or some new stunt rig. Oh, 
This is a little tribute here to Drunken Master 2. As I said, Brad Allen, he basically came up through Jackie Chan's stunt team and we wanted to pay homage to Jackie. So this little bit of choreography is straight out of Jackie Chan's Drunken Master 2. I absolutely love Simon in this. He's just trying to finish his drink. This was a bit of business that one of the other fight coordinators, Damian Walters, came up with. Spilling your drink and then catching it again. And I remember seeing Damian Walters do this of like kind of throwing his drink and then catching the liquid. And I was like, wow, that's gonna be one of those things that's gonna take 200 takes to get on camera. But Simon, to his credit, he really wanted to get that gag in and he did it. So I just love seeing that the Gary King spills his drink and then catches the beer back in the same glass. So now we're gonna have a look at my film from 2017, this is Baby Driver. This opening sequence, I basically like wrote the entire thing to the song Bell Bottoms by the John Spencer Blues Explosion, and I started imagining a car chase to go with it. So I had this idea, what if it was a getaway driver that he had to listen to music the entire time? Bell bottom. I always really love this reaction from John Bernthal. And it's like the first big laugh in the film is him pointing forwards and baby reversing back out fast. It has to be said that that is a truly monumental stunt. If you watch that shot again, it is incredible. And I remember Darren Prescott, the stunt coordinator, and driving in the car was Jeremy Fryer, who was like baby's driving double. That idea of doing this kind of like big sort of 280 around a corner and then coming so close to camera. I remember when we had this take, like we all excitedly watched it back on the monitor over and over again. What are those stunts that you're thinking, oh my God, that looks so cool. It's such an incredible shot. This whole sequence was not only edited to the music and choreographed to the music, we basically had to reverse engineer the entire car chase to the song. And then on top of that, we kept adding little things just so you put in time with the music. <laughs> Like, for example, we added some extra struts to these sequences. So basically we would make even things that were wiping in front of the camera go with the song. So everything is real photography. And then occasionally there's little things that happen where you say, hey, what if we added extra struts to put them in time with the beats of the song? So we kept finding things that happen in the frame and then we put them in time with the music. Like, so even this flare, which did actually happen in the real photography and we decided to accentuate it all in time with the music. This was a stunt which we agonized over a lot because Darren Prescott, the stunt coordinator, knew that Jeremy Fry, the driver, could do this kind of 180 in, 180 out. And the stunt looked very impressive. Like Jeremy is really doing this kind of like 180 turn one way, 180 turn the other way. And then the one thing that we needed to do afterwards, we'd shot the stunt and Bill Pope, the cinematographer had said, you need something to make him do the first turn. So actually this truck is entirely digital. And this truck is just reversing out to give a reason for like baby to swerve the first time. And then this truck is reversing, that's really there. And so that gives him reason to swerve the other way. But it was like Bill Plope's clever idea to add an extra vehicle reversing to give a reason for Baby to do the first turn. What's also crazy about this sequence is for people who live in Atlanta, the geography of his route is actually pretty dead on. <laughs> in this first part of the chase, he's pretty much going in exactly the right order of streets. So I hope people in Atlanta, Georgia appreciate the fidelity to the geography. So now we have a clip from my new movie. This is Last Night in Soho. This is the first dream sequence in the movie where Eloise, played by Thomas and Mackenzie, goes back to the 60s and appears to inhabit the body of Anya Taylor-Joy in her dreams. Well, hello there. 
What's clever here is that Thomason is actually really standing next to Anya Taylor-Joy. I thought it would be really bad if Thomason was separate from Anya because the whole point of the movie is that they have a connection in their dreams and it was really important for the two actresses to be in the same shot. So what you're actually seeing here is like half a mirror. There's a mirror right here because obviously you can see Matt Smith's real reflection and that's Matt Smith. On this side, there is a green screen behind Thomas and McKenzie so that she can be standing in like a hole in this set next to Anya Taylor-Joy. So everything that you're seeing here is real except for this part where basically the wizards in the digital effects department led by Tom Proctor from Double Negative, we have to shoot the reverse plate of the nightclub and put it into this section here so essentially it looks like one seamless shot. The bartender said I should get to know the handsome fella standing next to Silla Black. You should. And you are? The next Silla Black. Are oh, you now? Well, you know she started out as a coach at girl. She is actually standing there, so this is not something where we've shot Thomas in separately from Anya, and I think that really helps the performance. If that sounds complicated, even me describing it, then you're not alone. A lot of the crew members on the day were sort of going, wait, but how do we... And then when they see us kind of do a couple of takes, they say, ah, now I understand. This is a song by the Graham Bond organization, their cover of Wade in the Water, which is one of the first songs that I thought of for this movie. And I would imagine this scene uh, whenever I would hear the song. Long before I wrote the screenplay, I just would have a movie version of Synesthesia where I would imagine this scene happening. Now this shot here, a lot of people think that there's some nifty edits going in here, but in truth, this is one uninterrupted steady cam take, but there's one little uh, addition rather than a, a cut. There's this little bit here where Thomason comes into it, which basically we did by repeating the steady cam move at exactly the same place. But it's not a motion control shot because it's such a long steady cam shot. Our amazing camera operator, Chris Baines, just basically repeated the same move. And the reason that it looks so slick is because the performers, Matt Smith, Annie Taylor-Joy, and Thomas and McKenzie, replicated their moves exactly. A lot of people are saying, wait, how did you do that? Is it motion control? Is it green screen? It's neither. It's basically having a absolutely shit hot camera operator who can replicate the move. So basically we're like saving thousands and thousands of dollars by him being able to have the muscle memory of doing the same move. But now from this point on in the sequence, there are no cuts. What you're watching now is an uninterrupted take. So it's both simpler and more complicated than it appears because basically what you're watching is a succession of Texas switches. Anya Taylor-Joy and Thomas and McKenzie are basically switching places. There's nothing more to it than that. It's just like amazing choreography, like an amazing Steadicam shot. So I'm very proud of this sequence because it's essentially like five Texas switches in a row. And so there are no edits in this sequence. You're watching essentially like one uninterrupted steady cam take right through to the end. It's really like a testament to sort of great choreography, great camera operation, and three amazing performers who are able to pull off the dance moves.